Welcome back to Science Sundays. Every week you have 23 ABC's meteorologist Brandon Michaels and I here talking about the weather we're experiencing and the weather we're expecting. But there's another environmental scientist out there working to keep you safe, and that's incident meteorologist Rob Ricky on the front lines of the French fire. 23 ABC's Veronica Morley met up with him earlier this week to talk about the scientific instruments he is using in that remote area to forecast the fire weather each day for a cruise. Check it out. That's right, Elena. Well, as you know, wildfires have everything to do with weather. So for this Science Sunday, we have a really great experiment with the incident meteorologist Rob Ricky. Rob, tell us about what we're doing today. Oh, well, so what we're going to do is we're going to send up into the air this thing called a radio sond. And what this does is as it's going up in the air, it's actually going to be recording the temperature of the atmosphere. It's going to tell us about the humidity of the atmosphere. And there's a GPS sensor in, here, sensor in here too. So as it's going up and it's moving around, it's going to tell us about what the wind speed and the wind direction is as well. So some really important information that I can get from launching a balloon is I can figure out where the atmosphere actually warms with height. Normally the atmosphere cools with height, but sometimes it warms with height. And where it warms with height, we call those inversions, and those are stable layers. If you've ever watched a smoke column, or even clouds as they develop vertically, when they hit a stable layer in the atmosphere, they'll actually spread out. So if you've ever watched a smoke column, you'll see that smoke column rise, and at some point it actually stops rising and spreads out, and that's because it's probably hit a stable layer at one of those inversions. And those are very important to recognize. On unstable days, uh, fire activity actually tends to increase, and that's because air from aloft actually is able to mix down to the surface, and that fresh air into the fire aids combustion and can really get it going. Whereas on stable days, you get less mixing and you tend to have less fire activity. You also tend to have less winds on a stable day and you tend to have stronger winds on an unstable day. So what do we have to do first? So the first thing that we, which I've already done is I've, I baseline this on, meaning I got this thing going, there's some batteries in here and I know it's measuring uh, what I want it to measure. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate this big weather balloon. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, so we're filling this balloon with helium, and that's going to give us enough lift to lift our radio sound off the ground. And uh, I do have some weights tied to the bottom of the balloon, and when those weights start to lift off the ground, that's when I know there's enough helium in the balloon. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh man. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man. Could I have done something different? Um, probably not. It was just like a really old balloon. Okay. All right, so we're going to inflate this balloon and when it's filled up enough to lift the sun, then we're gonna let it go. All right, Rob, so now that you have the balloon filled up, once we set it up into the air with all your equipment, what are we gonna be finding out? So what I wanna know is how does the temperature, the humidity, and the wind direction speed change with height? And from that, I can determine how dry it's gonna be in the afternoon. I can figure out how warm it's gonna be in the afternoon. And I can also measure something called atmospheric instability. Atmospheric instability can be important on a fire because it can tell us about, for one, if we're gonna have thunderstorms or rain showers in the afternoon, which I'm actually not expecting in this case, but it can also tell us a little bit about the fire itself. When the atmosphere is very unstable, air from the upper parts of the atmosphere can mix down to the lower parts of the atmosphere, and that can actually help to really fuel the fire itself. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and release the balloon. All right, so three, two, two. One! The radio sound is actually communicating by radio to a radio that I have on the ground, and so it's transmitting it to the radio, and then that's being recorded on my laptop computer. So once this is done, then I actually I'll look on my computer, and I'll take a look at how these variables change with height in the atmosphere, and I'll use that to actually make my weather fire weather forecast more accurate. 
Now just head over to our website, turn to 23.com forward slash science Sundays to learn more about radio songs, weather balloons, and of course, fire weather forecasting. Plus be sure to watch Veronica's feature of a day in Rob's life, helping our crews battling the French fire. We'll see you next week.